The Miami Heat played zone just under 14% of the time during the regular season, but in the good example of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, they used it on 51% of Philly's possessions, and they held them to a measly 34 points. So let's see how it works and why the Sixers were embarrassingly bad attacking it. First off, it's not a traditional 2-3 zone. They borrow from the amoeba by stacking their guards when the ball is on top. When it is passed to the wing, it is the guard's priority to get over there and defend the ball. You'll notice they bring their forwards way up high to support the guards, but the forward's priority is the corner as Hakez sprints back to prevent the shot. Batum is telling Buddy to feed Embiid. He doesn't even look down there until it's passed back to him, and by then, Love has taken the pass away. So now Batum and Buddy are playing catch until the ball has to be forced up at the end of the shot clock. Sometimes they'll run a 2-2-1 full court press back to 2-3, which I love, and you can see how there are only 14 seconds in the shot clock before they begin the offense. With no low post filled, Love can occupy the weak side and has to deal with the 2.9 second dance inside the lane to avoid a defensive 3 second violation. When the guards stack like this, the inside ball screen attempted by Embiid is nullified. Now, you'll see Wright tell Highsmith to take the ball when it goes to the right side, with Hakez shadowing the left wing until Wright can recover. Hakez then jumps down to the corner. Notice the focus on Embiid. Someone has to be touching him at all times when he's around the key. Jimmy, then Love. Maxi has to get going and does draw two defenders, opening up a corner three for Oubre, but he opts to take it himself with one and a half on the clock and the Heat will gladly give up a contested shot like this all game long. The guards are stacked again to prevent dribble penetration from out top, and check how Hotkes is facing the basket so he can see all the offensive players. With the wing unoccupied, they'll have the guard pick up and beat at the elbow so Hotkes can guard Maxi in the corner. It's hard to believe there was no other motion from the offense at this point, and not surprising, this is the shot they get. The Sixers tried setting ball screens on both guards at the same time, with the intent on rolling Reed down the middle and hitting him, but Oubre doesn't look that way. Here's Hero bumping down to let Wright guard the wing with nobody in the weak side corner. Hawkins basically becomes a third guard to easily pick up Buddy. Watch him on the drive. He stays on the level of the ball, staring a hole through it, ready to close to wherever the pass is made. With the good pressure on Maxi, it's another turnover. What the Sixers don't seem to understand is that the seam to attack in a 2-3 zone is the gap between the guard and the forward. Because Embiid wants to post up, Batum can't go anywhere, and on the swing, Maxi should be attacking on the catch right here. He would then have his pick of open three-point shooter or Embiid for a dunk when Love would have to step up to stop the ball. Instead, he goes the other way. Watch how Hawkez takes away the shot until Highsmith can get there, and then notice how Hawkez checks to make sure that corner is empty so he can completely blow up the pick and roll. Finally, Buddy tries to attack that scene between the guard and the forward, but this is not his strong suit and becomes the third turnover versus the zone in the first quarter alone. Philly's plan to set a ball screen by Embiid is pointless because they just switch this and Bam is in support on the block to take away his cut into the lane. Now, Maxi has been dribbling in place for 10 dribbles. Buddy wanders in front of him and Batum has to burp up a quick release shot that almost goes in. The guards are stacked again to dissuade Maxi from driving, but instead of right bumping Butler down towards the baseline, they stay matched up. Highsmith sees this and tries to get Butler out of there, but it's too late. He's trailing, goes for the shot bake, and Batum makes them pay. If they want to feed Embiid in the low post from the wing, it plays right into the zone's hands. Stacked guards out top, and then Hakez picks up Lowry on the wing. There should be a corner filled to force Hakez out of there, but instead, he's allowed to roam to the post for a double with Highsmith already standing there to close out on Lowry, who takes the exact shot the Heat want him to. A long, inefficient two-point shot with some pressure. Down the stretch, they almost go to a box and one with Hakez guarding Embiid man to man. This means they can create an advantage on Bam at the left block if they could get two players on that side. Instead, they can't force feed the ball to Embiid and swing it to where the defense has numbers. Because Hakez stayed glued to Embiid, Bam has to close out to the skip pass, forcing Batum into another perfect shot for the zone. However, Embiid was able to somehow tip this to himself and catch Highsmith's hand in the cookie jar for a crucial basket that gave the Sixers the lead. Better late than never as they ran one of their best conceived sets of the night against the zone at a time they needed it the most. Hit and beat in the high post, and this is a great double since only Batum was on that side of the floor, but it leaves a completely hobbled Butler on the weak side splitting a difference. He
he turns his head, allowing Oubre to duck in and made matters worse by fouling him on the and one. And this essentially ends the game for the Heat. Let's hope we see some better execution by the Bulls just for the sake of the game, but it might not matter since such a key piece for the Heat and Jimmy Butler is out indefinitely. These playoff games are going to be absolutely epic and the best place to watch is in the arena. So download the SeatGeek app and get the best choice of seats from all around the internet in one place. It's incredibly easy to get the tickets right to your phone. They're guaranteed. And if you use my code BBALL10, you'll get 10% off of any number of purchases. The seats I got for you 2 in the sphere from SeatGeek were amazing. And I'm so thankful I can use them for all my ticketing needs to any sporting event, concert, or the theater.